where do we really fail at teaching programming? Now, this, uh, this talk in front of a full room of um, programmers, students of computer science at a university is probably bold, but we really do fail at teaching programming. We are just a statistical error. Uh, we know that because the industry is craving for adequate people, creative people, to fill in the blanks in their organizations, fill in positions, and add more value. This talk is not about a grand revelation in education. No one knows, and no one can make an education something that's not now, at least partially. But um, we're definitely in a pursuit of fixing small things that small bits, they're gonna make a better whole uh, in the future. What I did um, for the last couple of years, I traveled all, all around the world. And I looked how formal education is similar wherever I go. It's similar in its benefits and it's similar in its uh, mistakes. And because I worked as a consultant, I did a lot of um, consulting for startups about user experience in CSS. Now, I know how many people feel about CSS, and it's really peculiar to see how a simple thing like a style sheet can make people cry in a team. How companies that should scale up their products have a problem and struggle with um, the basic uh, need to scale a complex layout to a large application with CSS. That's, that's why I'm going to talk about a bit um, through the, this talk about CSS, because um, we have a problem with thinking about it. Then I decided to go back to Serbia and start Zamfir. Uh, it's a digital first computer school. So I thought about it and said, we don't need brick and mortar. Why would you use buildings when we have technology? Why do we foster this unexplicable need to have rooms and auditoriums when we can have everything that we need with technology, with internet? We use it daily. People, just think about it, people make applications that help them find hairdressers for pets. And we still have to travel miles and miles to go to school and sit down and listen to a lecture. You're listening to a lecture that ends in 45 minutes, and then you go back home. If you missed it, if you were sick, or didn't make it, you didn't have time, that knowledge that was presented to you in those 45 minutes is gone forever, unless someone tapes it, or unless someone makes a transcript of it and you read it later. I'm thinking about putting knowledge in its natural habitat, about a knowledge about digital industry that we're in, that we work in, should be completely virtual. Most of this info in this talk comes from um, our research that we did in Zamfir. And um, the results of this research is something that I'm gonna share with you in a way, and you'll be able to see what we can do to change these mistakes that we make unintentionally. I wanna start off just having a brief look at how computer science education works today. We teach about digital computers the way that we taught li literally any science in the 18th century. We have an industrial education. Our education is set so it produces accredited personnel for companies, yet it doesn't do that. Graduates go to companies and they get training that costs a lot of money and costs a lot of time. And if you add five years at college and one year of corporate training, you lost, well, not lost, but you didn't have to spend six years of your life to learn something that you should have learned in college. I'm a self-educated programmer. I dropped out of college. I looked at what I get at college and I said, okay, if I'm at home, and I decide what I'm gonna learn about today. That's probably going to be better. I don't know, let's try it. I can go back to college anytime. So I did that. And now 
I'm an entrepreneur that wants to build a school as a startup. I might be a bit biased, but self-education is better in one way. It's responsive to change in the industry. If you're looking at requirements for a job and you want to be a front-end developer, you're going to look and say, okay, this company asked me for these technologies. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to learn those things. If you go to college, you don't have the power to change the curriculum. No one has. The system is really uh, bureaucratic and there's a lot of processes that need to happen just for one small innovation, one small change in the curriculum. And basically our formal education um, is based on regurgitation. I tell you something, you remember that by heart and you just repeat it. And that's how we evaluate things. And then you hear students saying, hmm, I learned so many things that I'll never use in my life. And that adds frustration. They, they feel like they're wasting time while education is always an investment. If someone's thinking to himself, okay, I'm, I'm wasting my time and I invested in this, I'm gonna pull out. I don't wanna spend my money and time on this. That's why people drop out of colleges. So what have we done to education now? There's new technology. Someone said, awesome, let's use that and add a digital system for people to apply to college. Let's make them, um, empower them in a way so we can skip some administration work. But let's still require them to come to this room, to this auditorium, and sit down for 45 minutes or for an hour and a half and listen to it. Now what we did is we complemented this traditional system that we have for, for centuries with a couple of digital things. What, we really, what we've really done is we added complexity to that system and we create fatigue in students because they think to themselves, why can I do this thing online and that other thing I have to go to the office? That shouldn't be so. But the education, the formal education has two problems. We all have those problems personally though. It's a problem of value and evaluation. What do we think is valuable? You go to a, to a lecture and someone says, this is something that I want to learn, this is the pool of data that you need, here you go, and you can do whatever you want with it. You don't have to really use it. No professor is going to come over and say, um, did you apply that knowledge? Did you contextualize it? Do you know what, what this means? No. Because we leave that to be optional. And then you compare the real knowledge, the real value that you get from creating something meaningful, you compare that to a house and a heap of bricks and planks. That's not a house. Essentially, you have everything a house has, but it's not a built thing. So how do we value, uh, how do we evaluate people today? This is what we do. We give them data and we assess them on their ability to repeat what we said to them. That's our test now. That's how we value people. People with college degrees got their college degrees, not because they don't know anything. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that evaluation goes so far to write out something that you remember by heart. Here's an old friend of ours. Why is CSS so troubling for people? Why do programmers break when they hear they need some complex CSS that can't bootstrap. We have a problem at looking how CSS works. I've done CSS architecture. CSS is really simple, but we don't know how to use it. What do we do? CSS grew out of its shoes. CSS was never intended to be used for this rich experience on the web that we use it for today. And because it does something it's not intended to, we have a problem with perceiving how it should really function in our daily work. While CSS is really a, a case study for um, bad design, multiple bad choices stack one on top of the another, lack of consistency and age. Nothing in CSS is named properly. You can ask any person that starts learning CSS and they expect one thing and they get another. It never works out. But what we really fail at is providing people with actual context of why something is really working in CSS like that. 
I'm not saying Internet Explorer, of course. Um, but the intended design, why is that so? There's a lot of people that know CSS, but never have they built a layout with a sticky footer on the bottom. But they know CSS, right? This, um, every presentation has to have a code sample somehow. I don't know why. Um, but this is an example how a sticky footer should look like with Flex in 2016. No one has any idea what the last block is. Ask Microsoft. But the first two blocks are there, and they work, but no one knows how. People that actually understand CSS have a pretty good idea why that, that works so. But we don't really, when we teach CSS, we don't tell people, this is how the browser will render your CSS. And that's the point of education. You need to learn people, teach people, sorry, teach people about models that they apply when they do something. Why is this happening? Why is the single best question any student can have, any man can have? Instead, we do this. This is a real life example of a website that assesses programmers and their ability to code CSS. They give a, a score a 100, that's a ma the maximum, and you as a freelancer have to fill out this test, which is completely meaningless. Ruby line, I've, I've done CSS in production in serious applications for eight years. I've never ever seen this in documentation. No one has ever needed it. But a person will get a point on this, and eventually they'll stack up the 100, and they have a perfect score. But you don't know if they know and if they are able to do CSS. What we should really teach people is, how is your work going to be done in the future? What's your daily routine, and how does a um, front-end developer work? So look in the future work and create education in that image. How do we do evaluation? I'm going to reiterate on that because this is a really important subject. Do we need to solve it? Yes. Is it bad? It is. We should evaluate people on their ability to make something meaningful and new. Their ability to connect the pieces of data that they have, which we call knowledge. Um, we need to make them understand a mindset of each thing that they do daily, because that mindset will produce useful models that he, they can just recycle and create things without ever having that awful dreaded uh, need to, I don't know, load bootstrap in their CSS. I don't know why anyone except Twitter would do that. Ultimately, the, the knowledge that we get, the value of that knowledge, is um, really our competency to apply it daily in our future. The best framework for that is project-based evaluation. Evaluate people by giving them a concrete task and saying, this is your project. Complete it. I want to see why you did things that you did, how you solved it, how did you approach the problem that you have. And if you have this problem, separate it to smaller chunks and tell me why did you apply this pattern of thinking why did you do certain things? If I know that you understand why you did something, then I know you understand the problem at large. I'm not the only one that thinks that education needs fixing. Y Combinator has a request for startups. They say it, education will inherently fix everything if we fix education first. So all of those 23 categories that they say startups will become and the, they hope that start, the startups in those categories will be most valuable, they always say education is the first one to be fixed. So let's imagine a guy named Philip. He wants to be a front-end developer. Naturally, he goes to college, applies and gets in. This is the curriculum that Philip gets. So he looks at it and says, yeah, algebra is okay. Programming makes sense. Why do I need to learn electronics? This is um, this is just a variance of um, variance of uh, 
curriculum in a university in Southeast Europe. Why do I need sociology? Management? I'm a front-end developer. I don't want to be a manager. So what happens then? As time goes and, um, you know, eventually some exams are taken, some are flunked, of course, um, Phillips gets frustrated. He says, I'm investing too much time and I doubt that this thing that I'm having a problem with, like electronics, is really useful for me. So what, what's the, the model that we should apply to this curriculum? Well, let's try something like this. Why? Do you know how a curriculum should be built? First of all, in traditional education, we have no mechanism of applying personalization and special, uh, specialization so um, detailed, like front-end development. We don't have that in universities, yet there's a lot of uh, demand for front-end developers. I don't know a university that offers that program. Open position um, requirements of any company and see what they ask for. They ask for JavaScript. HTML and CSS, of course. They ask for a knowledge of a framework. That's the curriculum that we should build for our schools. Because our schools should be making people competent for work later on and not uh, producing some kind of accredited uh, personnel that still needs training. And add a couple of things that formal education does wonderfully and self-taught programs have no idea about, like data structures, code management, sadly, um, design patterns. Those really important things are something that you learn on a at a college, in a university, but rarely self-taught programmers do that. So how would that work really in a new, bold digital education? Digitize everything. Forget about brick and mortar. And think about this. An education that offers personalization to uh, that degree that learning is tailored only for you. Imagine no bureaucracy that <laughs> tramples innovation. No need to explain why something new should be introduced, rather just testing it and see if that works. It's a human error if we fail. Okay, if we don't, we made something great. And then better access to learning resources. Imagine something that we don't like to hear. Financial classes in our society. Lowering requirements for commutes. Lowering requirements for the presence of people. Migrations. We help them economically and we help a lot of people to gain access to better education. And then something really important that we don't have at our formal education nowadays. We don't have a mechanism to continue learning in that system while when we finish, when we graduate. If you graduate, you're out. That's it. But what we should do is institutionalize perpetual learning. Make it so that we have the ability just continue on learning as long as we want, when we want, and what we want. Make a choice mandatory. The industry is undoubtedly looking for something like this. Because if you have a position open for six months, you definitely cannot find a good enough candidate. But what's more important than this is our world is transformed by technology. It's really evolving, and in 20 years, every medic will need to know something about programming. We'll be so um, emerged in that te technology that it's going to be basically a part of us. So by shaping computer science education today, we're going to shape the world of tomorrow. Thank you.